So our weatherman has been saying that this is the driest month of May that we've had in quite some time. My half inch ram pump is doing well. It's filling my water tanks, which I use to water the garden. I still have enough to water the garden, but I want to be able to water the grass as well because my grass is turning brown. So the only thing I can think of to remedy this, we've got to go bigger and better. Instead of a half inch ram pump, we're going to build a three quarter inch ram pump and got us a three quarter inch foot valve, which we are going to have to modify. The first thing we're gonna do is take this screen off. Phillips screwdriver, we'll take that out. And what we wanted to do is get this spring out that's holding it closed. I want it to fall open. So inside, there is the head of the, the one bolt inside and we have a nut on the other end. In order to get this off, we're gonna take our socket, Put that on the one that's inside, and a small wrench on the one that, on the outside, and just undo that. And depending on the size foot valve you're using, this nut and bolt size will differ. And then we'll just put our nut back on here. Really, we don't even need this screen. We'll keep it on the side for now. So now our foot valve it just falls open. Our pressure tank will come after the one-way check valve. As the water gets pushed through, it's gonna build up pressure in that tank and that uh, pressure is gonna be used to help assist the water up the hose to the water tanks. To, the, to do that, we're gonna need some PVC glue and primer and gloves because I don't want my hands to be all purple at the end of this. So our pressure tank consists of two foot by two inch PVC pipe. For the bottom, we have a two inch to three quarter inch threaded adapter. For the other end, we have a small clean out assembly and one coupler for to put our two, two by three quarter inch adapter on the other end. So first things first, we're gonna primer everything up. First thing we're gonna do is our two inch coupler. Get a bunch of glue in there. You wanna make sure you have enough glue in there so we have a good seal all the way around. We'll put some glue on the two inch PVC pipe on one end, and then we're gonna push our coupler on and twist at the same time. And hold until it sets. And now we'll do the other side of the coupler. So again, we're gonna twist and push, and then the other side of our pipe, which will be the top part of our pipe. And we glue this because yes, this is going to have a lot of pressure inside. And again, push and twist. All right, so. We've got our threaded end here for our plug. And a threaded end at the bottom to connect it into the ram pump itself. And that is all the gluing I'm going to be doing. So we're gonna lose the gloves. Now we're gonna get out our Teflon tape. And with the threads pointed to the right, it's a little trick. You just want to wrap away from you. Maybe about 10 turns. This way, when we thread this in, it's not going to be trying to take the Teflon tape off. It's actually going to secure it even tighter. We're going to take our inner tube. I just got a small 12 and a half inch inner tube. It seems to work pretty well for me. Our inner tube is just going right inside here with the stem facing up. Because we're going to need to put air in here and it's a lot easier to put air in it once the inner tube's in there than putting the air in there. So we have our inner tube inside the pressure chamber. I'm just gonna go put some air into the tube we don't need a lot of air in there, but we want some air in the tube. Fold the stem down in there. Now we're gonna take our plug and twist that in by hand. 
and just get our pair of channel locks, get on there, and tighten it down so we don't have any leaks. Now, I got a pack of 10 of these pipe thread connectors for PVC. Works wonderfully well, very inexpensive. I'll put the pricing on all of this in the description. And again, we're gonna take our Teflon tape with the threads facing right. We are going to wind away. And we're just going to install the taped up end into the bottom of our pressure tank. And again, our channel locks to tighten it down. And our pressure tank is complete. We're gonna put that on the side for now. Now, one trick that I would suggest is to go around and do up all the pipe thread connectors with the Teflon tape. And that way we can just get to the assembly. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a few moments, Teflon tape the rest of these pipe thread connectors and we'll get right back to it. I'm going to use this three quarter inch adapter, three quarter inch threaded with a slip on the end. The drive pipe usually fits in there snug enough that you don't actually have to worry about gluing. And this is going to go into one side of one of our two shutoffs. We have our drive pipe end that we already put on this shutoff. And we'll put on another connector. From our connector, we're going to go to our first union and the unions are getting put on just to make servicing the pump down the road a little easier because I could shut the water off coming in, disconnect it at the union, take the pump right off without having to go through a whole lot. On the other end of that union, we're gonna put another connector and then that will get connected to our first threaded T and overall I mean you could probably put these in pretty well hand tight without any issues with it leaking I want to line my T up with so that it's pretty much vertical with my shutoff we're gonna put one connector at the top. Channel locks do make it so much easier though. This connector is going to be for our waste valve. And we're gonna put one connector on the other side of the T. And we're gonna install our waste valve, our foot valve. This is the valve that's going to do the work of creating the water hammer effect. So as the water comes down through the drive pipe, it's going to come out the waste valve until it builds up enough speed to force this to shut. When that valve shuts, all the force from the movement of the water through from here all the way back through the drive pipe is gonna be converted into an instantaneous pressure. That instantaneous pressure is going to get forced out this way and back up the drive pipe. But the pressure going this way will open up our check valve. And our check valves are marked with the direction of flow right on the side. I use a PVC check valve. But if you're not sure which way it goes, blow in on it. It'll give if it's not. If you blow it on the other side, it won't give. You won't be able to blow through it. And you'll see there's a little metal ring in there that you can see. So our check valve goes in. And from our check valve, we're gonna install another connector. And from there, we're gonna install our second T. This is where our pressure uh, tank is gonna get mounted. We want our pressure tank facing up just like the check valve. On the other side of this, we're gonna put another connector. 
And from the T, we're going to go into a second union so that we'll be able to shut off the water. Coming from the tank so we don't have all the water coming from the tank back down if we need to work on it. Oh, very important. Don't lose this little black ring, whatever you do when you're putting these things together. Without that, it's gonna leak and you won't get the pressure you should have. And then we're gonna put another connector on the other side of the union and our second shut off so that we can shut the water off so that it doesn't come back down from the tanks. And then finally, two last little bit, another connector. I think we use nine of them all together. And then this part is more or less optional because our hose that I use to feed the tanks will connect onto this connector. But I like to add this extender onto it just so my hands, a little, I can work with the head, getting the hose off a little further away from the shutoff valve. And depending on what you're going into to feed the tanks or carry the water uphill, you may have to use some sort of other connector. I'm going to be using a regular old garden hose, which will fit right on to this one here. So this is the main working of a ramp up. The only thing left is to install our pressure tank right on this last opening in the T here. And there we have it. The hydraulic ramp pump, three quarter inch. The only thing left to do is go take this down to the creek, hook it up to a drive pipe and test her out. Then we could go and we could check against our half inch ram pump that's already down there. And we'll see if bigger truly is better. Hopefully, I believe we will get more water out of the bigger pump. But we'll see. So I hope you enjoyed the video, found it interesting. And if you did, please, by all means, click that like button, hit the subscribe and ring that notification bell. This way, YouTube can get this video out to more people just like you and me, and you can stay up to date on all my latest videos. Thanks. Have a great day. We'll catch you. I'm Chris. This is Creative Redneckin'.